It's so good to see you, girl. Come on, sit yourself down. <laughs> you want some coffee? No, I got some tea in here. You want some coffee or some cocoa? It's a little nippy out here on this porch. But you know I like to sit here. This is my special place. Uh-huh, girl. I'll be thinking about all kinds of stuff when I was young and how we used to rip and run up and down the streets. And I mean, you know, we had to be in before the street light came on. But, you know, I was just right up the street. <laughs> Uh-huh, go ahead, go ahead, fix you some. I'm going to just keep talking. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the days. How you tea? Oh, you got some cocoa? Okay, girl, look. Girl, you remember when we used to run up and down them streets over on 38th Street, right around the way... Where uh, George Floyd, you know, that whole situation took place. Mm-hmm, when we used to live over there. Happy, go lucky, yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember when uh, we used to jump double dutch in the streets and do the dance? Uh, we thought we was in a dancing line, a uh, uh, dancing band. <laughs> and we used to just be marching away, remember? We have our keys in our back pocket and... Hair with the baby hairs. That was a real baby hair. They don't know nothing about no baby hair now. <laughs> Girl, shut up. We was wearing them French braids. We really thought it was something when you had your French braid part. The two French braids. Uh-huh. And we put the French braid part on the side. And then we get some. That's when we start learning about a little bit of weed. We start adding a little bit to our ends. Remember that? We have our barrettes and sometimes our bees. But... Put a sucker in our in our ponytail, remember? Yeah, them was some good days. That's when we, uh, you know, it was just a lot different up here then, wasn't it? Mm-mm-mm. But you know what I was thinking about, girl? You know how you start just looking through your life and just asking yourself, now how did I put up with that? Where did I learn this? Well, you know, I was thinking about, you know, this is Domestic Violence Month. And I was thinking about the situations that I had been through in my younger years. Not my husband. My husband wasn't physically abusive. Now, later on, he started saying a couple of things I didn't too much like. But, you know, he was not overall a, a abusive man. Let me just make that clear. Mr. Mr. Amos was not physically abusive. Um, and I love him for that. And that's probably why he got the biggest portion of my life. <laughs> Yes, girl, because he wasn't trying to hit me, okay? But I was trying to think back to where did I even think that that was okay? You know, I didn't see my mama get hurt physically, you know. I didn't see that for my grandmother. Although, you know, they had their things in their marriages. But they, you know, when I was coming up, they didn't go as in-depth as we do now. You know, we'd be telling everything. (laughs) And I'm glad that we do because that... That silence that we kept, you know, how could that help the next generation? You know, we we had too many doors that were not open where you couldn't go to your mama and say, Mama, this boy hit me. You know, back then my mom would say, go hit his ass back. <laughs> That's what my mom would say. Ooh, take your sister out there. Where I'm going to go stand out here and watch you. You know, that uh, that was my mom. My mom didn't play in them streets. <laughs> She wasn't a street person, but you know what I'm saying? If somebody hits you, you going to fight. <laughs> and I was a little bitty somebody. I didn't, after my first baby, I weighed 97 pounds. That shows you how tiny, tiny I was. Because, you know, I had that boy when I was 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doing okay. He's still hard-headed, but you know he okay. <laughs> but anyway, girl, I was thinking about where did I learn that it was okay For somebody to hit me, for a a significant other to hit me. So I thought about how, you know, we was young. In between that summer, between sixth grade and seventh grade, you know, we watching the teenagers. They seem in love. I don't know. The 80s was like everybody was in love. Purple Rain came out, you know, from Minnesota. And Prince was uh, Prince was doing it, man. We was on the map. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, girl. We, we thought we was cute, too. Anyway, you know, I, from my eyes, and then I had a best friend at that time, and we used to say a lot of things. You know, your kids be listening to each other sometime more than they be listening to you. So, you know, make sure that you let your kids be around people who are healthy for them. Or ask your kids, what kind of conversation, what y'all be talking about? Because, you know, sometimes we be busy as parents and we don't really, you know, we caught up in our own thing and we ain't got time to be listening or really inquiring too much about, you know, what the kids is talking about. Anyway, and then, you know, I know my mama had a certain amount of trust for me because she, you know, she would let me do things, but not as much as my sister got to do. I mean, my sister got to do everything. I used to think, why is she <laughs> Get to do everything. I never do. But I didn't say that. Because, see, you didn't talk back to your mama back then. And she said, no, that's just what the hell it was. Okay? We didn't come back. What? Well, Ma, uh, I used to write notes. <laughs> I used to be scared to ask her. So I write real nice to my best English mommy. Can I please? Will it be okay if? But, you know, I, I also... um I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I worked when I was young. From, like, 11 years old, I used to babysit. One of my mama's friends, a uh, little girl, and uh, she never repaid me like she was supposed to. But I thought I was really doing something. You hear me? And I did love babies. So it really, really wasn't too bad for me. We watched all our mama's kids. Like when they would go out dancing, you know, we watched a little boy named Amos. He was so cute. I hope he turned out to be something wonderful. <laughs> anyway, let's get back on this story. So I was just thinking, girl, where where did I? Where did I think and why did I think it was okay to let a boy hit me? And so I remember a conversation me and my friend girl had. I ain't going to say nobody's name. She know who she is if she's still around the way. Uh, But we were seeing, we saw what we were experiencing was watching uh, um, young girls, you know, in their teens and their boyfriends were hitting on them. And for some reason in our eyes, we thought that that. Well, she said it to me, and then I believed it. She said, you know, if he's hitting her, he must really love her. And I was thinking, yeah, and we're every bit of 12, 12 and a half, close to 13. And so somehow I started associating love with violence. Do you hear me? I don't know why we were thinking that. Fast forward, I heard that she grew up and was in some abusive relationships and then I ended up being in some, too, because I thought, you know, well, he just doesn't want anybody around. Me. I didn't understand that somebody controlling you, not wanting you to be with your friends, not wanting you to do the things that you want to do, isolating you from your family, um, pushing you, saying mean things, you know. I mean, I've actually I've had a black eye. Um when I was 18 years old. Now, prior to that, I ain't taking no black eye from no sister. We about to fight, even though I was little, little bitty. <laughs> I didn't go start nothing. Let me get make that clear. You know I ain't start nothing, girl. You know I was pretty mellow. Just don't mess with me. Then I had a sister who, baby, baby, that sister used to fight. Okay? So a lot of that, I got to stand in her shadow. They be like, don't mess with her. That's her sister. <laughs> Appreciate you, big sis, Bola. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so that's, you know, we, my friend girl kind of is the one who opened my eyes in that wrong lens. And I started thinking that. So then, you know, as I got older, I got, I had a couple abusive relationships. And so by the time I was, let's see, from age 17 to age 20. Two, I didn't realize that, I didn't fully realize that it was okay, not okay, to be getting hit by no boy. Even though, boy, I'm going to call them boy, even though they were men. I'm, I uh, dealt with men quite a bit older than me. Too old to be with me for real when I look back. Um, but I was, you know, in my mind, I was so advanced uh, that the boys my age really, they, they didn't even have a decent conversation for me, so... I was really just trying to figure out where did I get the concept that it was okay for somebody to control my life, to hit me, 
I never felt really bad, bad about myself, but I did over time start. I was ashamed, you know, I didn't want to tell nobody. And I always believe if you're still dealing with somebody, uh, you know, why go tell everybody? But that's that's a no. I should have really started talking about it. By the time I did start talking about it, um, I started getting out. I had a friend at that time um, who really helped me to get out of that relationship. She's actually my sister-in-law now. We don't talk much no more, you know, for whatever reason. But she's the one who stopped talking me out of being in an abusive relationship. And then I ended up marrying her brother. (laughs) Ain't that a guy? That was all right. Because, you know, even though I'm separated from my husband now, it wasn't all bad. Yes, it could have been better in a lot of ways, but I'm grateful for the good times that we did have. I'm grateful that I, you know, didn't have to experience a whole lot of things that I was going through as a young woman. What am I talking about this for? Because, you know, start if you see a friend or you, you notice some behavior in your young, uh, in your children where they might be suffering some abuse, you know, from somebody in any kind of way, you know, inquire about that. Don't overlook their behavior changes. You know, don't. Don't knock them. Don't let them feel like they're, you know, don't make them feel like they're stupid because it's it's kind of a disease. I don't know if it's really a disease or it's some behavior that kind of like back then you were you learned it from your friends and it was like, OK, nobody was like, oh, girl, don't be letting the boys hit on you. Oh, girl. And I, I somehow I think my mom. I mean, I remember her saying something about it, but she didn't think we was, <laughs> she didn't think we was, you know, I don't want to say stupid enough, but that's what she would have said. She didn't think we was stupid enough to be letting no boys hit on us. So, you know, when I did come out and start telling my family that girl, they was mad. Like, why didn't you tell us? Because the thing about it is you be caught up thinking you're in love with this person and maybe you are, you know, but you know what they're doing is not okay. You know that somebody that loves you shouldn't be hurting you, you know. They shouldn't be hurting you. Um, they shouldn't hurt you physically, mentally, financially. They shouldn't deprive you of you, your life, the things that you like to do, tearing up your stuff when you, you know, you, you're making a project here, they come in and break it or tear it up. That's abuse. It doesn't have to be a physical hand. Yes, you can be raped by your husband. You can be raped by your boyfriend. When you say no, it doesn't matter who they are. No is no, your body is yours. So there's like, y'all know there's different types of abuse, domestic violence, okay? Physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse. Anything that makes you feel uncomfortable that somebody is inflicting on you, I feel like that's a form of abuse. Verbal abuse, you know what I'm saying? That one is a baby. Verbal abuse is a lot because you still be hearing them things later on. For me, um, I didn't feel the physical effects of the abuse as much as I did remember the actions, the words that were said to me and I'm just touching on the surface of some things, (laughs) y'all. I'm not going deep into this because like my my story about breast cancer, I really don't like to talk about these things because I don't want to give it energy. I also don't want to say too much because these people, some of them are still alive. You know, I don't want people hearing me talk about them with their doggy dog self, mean and evil, you know, hurting people, hurting me. For no reason, you know, um, and no doubt they're carrying that behavior on. So I, wh- the other thing I want you to know is if they're abusive to you, they're going to be abusive to everybody because the problem is not with you. It's with them. You get su- stuck in their sick cycle and then you start getting sick, too. But once you get out, who cares if he you, you feel, I know I was feeling like, oh, I don't want to see him happy with anybody else because I want to be with him. Then I start thinking, this fool ain't going to be happy with nobody else because he's the unhappiness. (laughs) He's the 
unhappiness. I'm not doing this in our relationship. I mean, when them light bulbs start coming on. So, you know, guys, don't, don't knock. Girl, don't knock people that get stuck in situations. Do what you can to help them. I'm not saying run up, girl, you know, save the day. But talk to your friends. If they cut you off, keep praying for them. No matter what, you should be praying for them, right? Because some of us get stuck in situations. We don't even know how the heck we got there. Sometimes you don't have enough sense in that moment or enough knowledge in that piece of your life to really understand what's happening to you. So that's why it's important for us as elders. I guess I'm kind of getting, a, oh, am I an elder? I got to look up what's the age that of, oh my God, I think I'm an elder. <laughs> it's so funny because I, you know what? I know I'm over half a century old. Okay. I know this, but I really don't feel like that inside. <laughs> Okay, so listen to me. I'm an elder. I, I really believe I am. I think of 50 plus, right? Anyway, the elders wasn't talking to us enough about why and what abuse looks like. Because I don't think they really knew. A lot of us, oh, don't tell nobody that. Oh, just be quiet about that. No. That's why people was over here getting a butt tore up or their spirit just sucked out of them because... They're in so much anguish and they're scared to talk about it. You just, he's your husband. He's taking care of you. You know, I never had that luxury, but you know, somebody did. <laughs> I don't care if he is taking care of you. Get the hell out of there. Go to your mama house. If you can't go to your mama's house, call somebody. They got shelters up here and things. Now, I remember going to shelters with all my kids. They was little bitty. My first three. I was a little bitty, 110 or 115 pounds holding all these little babies, taking my little bitty self to a shelter from my apartment, okay? It wasn't even his place. From my apartment trying to run from somebody else. Now, when I look back, it's like, where the heck do they do that at? I shouldn't have to run from my place because I'm scared of you, you know? Nobody should be in fear in their own home. Nobody should be uncomfortable with doing the things that they want to do because somebody else is controlling them because they're too insecure to let you be you because they know the more you your light shines that you'll figure out that they're dimming it. Not necessarily saying that, you know, see, I can't even be mean. <laughs> Most sisters be saying, forget him. He ain't nothing. But I, I, as the older I've gotten, you know, everybody has their light. And if he doesn't choose to let his shine, that's on him. But don't let... Him or her. I'm sorry. It could be. It doesn't matter if it's a, you know, what kind of relationship it is. If it's abusive, let them, the abuser, have their place. And then don't you be abusive. Now, I wasn't abusive. I wasn't abusive and I wasn't scared. I was afraid to fight back. Sometimes I get mad about that because I could have did. <laughs> anyway, I'm cool now. It's been so many years removed. But, um, yeah, if you were in a bad Abusive relationship that is making your life totally miserable and you're uncomfortable. I don't care if you ain't miserable in it. If you're being hit, if you're being controlled, if somebody's controlling your money, your time, how you come and go, pay, treating you like a child, which children need to be governed. Adult women don't or adult men don't. Um, if anybody's restricting you and hurting you physically, emotionally, spiritually, anything that doesn't feel good to you. Get out of that relationship or find help. I'm not telling you, you know, I don't know your full situation, but I do say if you're being hurt, get the hell out of there. Okay? Get out of there. I don't know if if people who are abusive can be helped. The ones that I dealt with, they, I mean, some of them took it to their grave. They still, uh, you know, abuse. They was beating people up then. I don't know if they ever get healed. Some of these people think that it's really okay to hurt others, so... You just have to make sure that you're healthy. And if you have kids, don't leave your kids with these people. Take your babies with you. Because then they start doing little things, you know, they could possibly start using the kids to hurt you and bring you back, whatever. Well, sister girl, look, let's drink this tea. And let's talk about something different, okay? Now, let me say a little prayer with uh, the women out here, the men out here, whoever you are. If you were being hurt, let me share, share this prayer with you. Oh, Father God, most high, 
I thank you for this day. I thank you for the breath in my body today. I thank you that I'm strong in my mind, body, and spirit. Lord, I thank you that you are aligning me in the place that I need to be. Thank you for opening up doors and new pathways for me to make it to where you want me to be. Lord, protect me and my children from any hurt, harm, and da- or danger. Help me to find the resources that I need to get me out of these situations financially, physically, spiritually that make me feel just horrible inside. Lord, send good people to give guidance. Send good people to be a light in my path, Lord God, and help me. Just regulate my mind right now, Lord, that I can make the best decisions for me and for my children, too, if I am a mother or a father. I thank you, Lord, for guidance. I thank you, Lord, that there's resources. I thank you, Lord, that I don't have to take anything that I don't want to take, whether that be at work, at home, in the in the streets. It's okay for me to be an advocate for myself and to look for help. It's not something that is not okay. It's not a white thing. It's not a black thing to take care of yourself. It's important to take care of you as a person. So Lord, I thank you for the knowledge that's being shared out here on domestic violence in any capacity. And I thank you that I am free today and I can choose to walk away at any time. This is my life that you gave to me to live and I don't have to compromise being me in this world for anyone else. I thank you, Father God, Most High, Creator, Alpha Omega. And so it is. It can't be otherwise. Amen.